Today we're talking about neutralization reaction. As defined, a neutralization reaction is a reaction when an acid reacts with a base to make salt and water. So let's look at um, and the variety of acids, strong or weak or strong or weak bases, can react with one another. In this example, you'll notice a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, reacting with sodium hydroxide, a strong base. And in this neutralization reaction, which is a one directional reaction, you'll see salt forming and water. It's not a reversible reaction. Now, the salt, varying on what is in that salt, will determine whether the solution ends up being having a pH of 7 or having a pH greater than 7 or less than 7. Because water, we know, has a pH of 7. Now, the salt, whatever ions are in there, depending if it has a conjugate acid of a weak, weak base or a conjugate base of a weak acid, might ionize in water and cause the solution to have a pH greater than 7 or less than 7. In this case, notice that these two conjugates, the conjugate base and the conjugate acid, are all from strong bases and strong acids, which means they end up being a neutral salt. So the pH of the salt ends up being 7 as well. Okay. Now, in a neutralization reaction, there are all four directional reactions, and they're double replacement reactions. When the moles of acid equals the moles of base, stoichiometrically as well, taking into account the stoichiome stoichiometry, you've reached something called the equivalence point. That's when moles of acid equals moles of base. Um, what is the pH at the equivalence point? Well, it depends, again, on that salt. We know water's pH is 7, but we t it depends on that salt. So it varies depending on the salt. Now, the salt is acidic. The pH, we know, is going to be less than 7. So pH less than 7. If the salt is basic, so it's a basic salt, the pH is going to be greater than 7. Now, if the salt is neutral, like we see above, pH is equal to 7. So depending on what the salt is and whether the salt is acidic, basic, or neutral, the pH at equivalence point will vary. Now, the equation we use when we're doing a titration, where we're trying to reach the equivalence point, where we're reacting an acid and base, is this equation right here. Let me introduce this equation in the next page. Oh, sorry. Let's go back and introduce this again. So here you have molarity of acid times molarity of base, or volume of acid. So molarity of acid times volume of acid. Multiplying these two, you get moles of your H plus ions, which is your acid. Likewise, if you multiply these two, molarity of base times volume of base, you get moles of hydroxide ions. Now, these two represent the number of hydrogen ions that that acid can contribute. If the acid is monoprotic, then you will write 1, so you multiply times 1. If it's diprotic, then you multiply by 2. If the acid is triprotic, you'll have to multiply this side by 3. Likewise, this tells you how much hydroxide ion that base can contribute. So if the base is monobasic, it's just 1. If it's dibasic, 2. If it's tribasic, you multiply this side by 3. Okay? We'll see some examples when we get when we head into it. This next slide is dis a discussion about titrations. A titration is basically when you react one against the other. The one that you have in this burette, this is called a burette. It measures volume, if you notice the vol volumetric tick marks here. It's the known concentration. We call that the titrant. We call, and we also call this the standard solution as well. So titrant and standard solution are basically the same thing. 
I'd highly recommend pausing this video and copying these definitions down. Analyte is your unknown. It's usually in your Erlenmeyer flask, which you're titrating against to figure out the unknown, the concentration of this unknown. Now, we, we, can test, we can put this into, we can stick also a pH meter into this Erlenmeyer flask. And this pH meter is a great accurate way to measure what is called the pH of the solution that you're titrating. That allows you to know where they, or estimate where the equivalence point, or actually know where the equivalence point is to the precise measurement that's um, outputted from the pH meter. Equivalence point, as defined earlier, is the moles of acid equaling the moles of base reacted in a neutralization reaction. End point is the point at which the indicator changes color. So you, you would add one drop of an indicator or two drops of two or three so two to three drops of an indicator into your analyte and that's going to change color once as you're adding your known concentration or your titrant it, when you reach what is called the equivalence point and again the reason why we have these two words is because we use an indicator to determine the equivalence point and the indicator actually changes color at what is called the end point. Hard to read where the acid, the equivalence point is, which is where the moles of acid equals the moles of base. Our eyes are not sophisticated enough to read and to determine that. Um, pH at equivalence point is estimated by looking at the acid and base strength and thus what's forming, including the salt that's forming, that will determine where the pH at equivalence point will be. And then we choose the indicator from that estimate. Here's an example. The example is the pH of, is equal to seven at the equivalence point of a strong acid, strong base titration, titration. So if you look at your indicators, bromothymol blue would be a best, would be one of the best, better indicators for an equivalence point of seven at, for that titration. Um, again, I would hope that you pause this and really copy these definitions down for your titration. Now we go into calculations. When we calculate the equivalence point in a titration, it's a very simple equation. Once again, when you multiply molarity times volume, we've always learned that multiplying those two will get you moles of your acid on this side. And of course, you have to multiply it times however much hydrogen ions, depending on the acid, if it's monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic. Likewise, if you multiply molarity of base times volume of base, you get your moles of base. And notice the definition of equivalence point is moles of acid equaling moles of base. And that's precisely what you see in this equation. And the stoichiometry of the acid and base is accounted for through how many hydrogen ions that you'd multiply on this side or how much hydroxide ions you'd multiply on this side. So I've got two examples to show for us to be able to see how this equation works. It's a very simple equation. Okay, one of the first things that I wanna do is figure out who's my acid and who's my base. And I'll notice hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So here's my volume, volume of my acid. I like to go through it and kind of map out what variables. Here's my volume or molarity of my acid. Here's my volume of my base, and I'm trying to find the molarity of my base. So I'm ready to set up my problem. And by the way, I'll notice that this is monoprotic and this is monobasic, okay? So it's just multiplying by one for each of these variables here. I won't put that one in. So it's as easy as just taking 0 0.10, so MA, point, or sorry, point zero add that zero in, one of the acid, and the volume of the acid is 20.60 milliliters. Now notice, class, this is not a, uh, this is a proportion. So however the volume is, is going to be the volume here. So it doesn't matter to, ch you don't really need to change your volume, your milliliters into liters. Now let's look at the base side. Here's your volume of your base. Molarity of base is your unknown. So I'm really going to follow the equation precisely and fit it in and, and substitute it in precisely also. So 30.00 milliliters is the volume of the base. Um, again, you really are multiplying by one on both sides because they're mon this is mono 
monoprotic, and this is monobasic. And then you solve for your molarity, your base, at the equivalence point. And it turns out to be, as the answer suggests, but you should calculate it so you can practice your math skills. And this is the molarity of the base. So let's look at example two. In example two, again, I go through it. This is my acid, and so this is Na. I'm looking for my Va. Here's my Mb, my molarity of my base, and here's my volume of my base. And this is my base, and here's my acid. Noticing that, that my acid ha is a diprotic acid. So let's go ahead and set up the problem. I'm going to, because it's diprotic, multiply the side for the hydrogen ions by 2. And then Ma is 0 0.105 molarity. And then Va is unknown. Mb is 0.118 molarity. Vb is 22.5 milliliters. Solving for MA, my answer is, in the end, 12.6 milliliters. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions in class. This will help you for set seven problems.